This podcast is part of E2C Network, where we share the whole Auburn experience. War Eagle Auburn fans, welcome to No Huddle, your source for Auburn football news and discussion, part of the E2C Network. I'm AJ Richardson. I'm also here with my buddy, Jared Davis. We're about to go play the Rebel, Black Bear, Land Shark, Thingamabobs, whatever you want to call them, because I feel like they just switch the name of their mascot or whatever they are every few years. So, you know, I guess we can go beat the Land Sharks or the Rebel Black Bears or Admiral Akbars. I don't care. What? Whatever you want to call them. <laughs> what is their actual mascot? I don't know. It's Land Shark, official. Okay. Okay. But you'll 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 hear I mean they still go like go rebels and you're like okay but you're land sharks why are y'all yelling rebels like this that's even worse than us like people critiquing Auburn for like saying war eagle but you're the tigers like no like at least Auburn has a chant yeah and we have an actual mascot no you yeah, we're not. You're, you're saying you have two mascots now what no whatever it's college football really if you study if you came from outer space and like went to college football and learned all the traditions you would you would probably go back home <laughs> like, this is too goofy um this I'm, is it's pretty interesting i mean you, have you ever listened to the words to some of our chants at every school has yeah, them, yeah. you're like this doesn't even make sense yeah uh, one well, and, and Ole Miss has a really good one if uh what is it the hotty oh, toddy yeah. one hottie you're like what are you saying here like just listen yeah. to the words of that. Oh yeah, they're, yeah they're, flam, whatever. Flam, flam, but yeah, they're all. They're, yeah, what? I'm not knocking Auburn. Every school has them, but I, as I sit there listening to our chants, I'm like, what does this even mean? Right. I mean, it, Auburn has bought to get up, but you know, at least we have some actual words in there. It's not just like yeah. nonsensical words. Right. So, it's it's kind of interesting. Um. Well, we've got Ole Miss coming to Jordan Hare six p.m. Central Time this Saturday. I'm personally excited about this game. I know a lot of people's uh, kind of expectations probably got lowered a little bit after last week's game against LSU. But I still think, and Auburn has yet to prove us wrong, has done a lot better in Jordan Hare than they have away. And I'm holding on to that right now. But there is a part of me that is just like, Ole Miss has a potent offense like LSU. And that part scares me, knowing that Lane Kiffin, if he gets his offense going, well, oh man, like the, it could be bad, but we could also be right in this thing. Um, kind of generally, and I was just thinking about this with coaching. Think about Hugh Freeze. This is like his reintroduction kind of to Ole Miss in a way, kind of. You know, he's back in an SEC school, coming back. He's playing against his old team where – Things went awry. Any kind of maybe hard feelings that you think might be going on there? Or any emotions playing his old team? Oh, yeah. I, I think both coaches are going to be amped up for this game. I think, you know, Lane likes to troll. And, you know, he was very heavily involved in potentially being the next Auburn coach. And mm-hmm. I don't, you know, I don't, there's some rumors that Auburn pulled the plug on that. If they're, If that's the case, you know, he'll be even more amped up for this. But without a doubt, I mean, Hugh Freeze, while he realizes he did wrong, some things wrong, I mean, he, you know, he was fired from his old job, um, which was Ole Miss. So I guarantee you he's going to be amped up for it. It's it's going to be, you know, it's going to be probably that type of uh, thing where Gus always was very prepared and amped up for Arkansas. Yeah. Um, I think that'll be the case, probably for both coaches here, which really may, I feel, if both coaches are, are too amped, I like I like us better because – Lane is known to do some really dumb things, like go, fourth, <laughs> like go for a fourth and eight, you know, on his own forty or something, because he, like, I could see him doing that. So, yeah, um, yeah, I, yes, I think Hugh will be fired up for this game. Yeah, when well, you got to think that piece of it combined with Lane Kiffin being in the running and the front runner for the Auburn coaching job, and if that is true, maybe Auburn pulled the plug on it, and you know, Lane Kiffin didn't you know withdraw his name for. I want to stay at Ole Miss. I, I don't know that, but if that is true, well, I, that just adds an extra layer of uh, just drama thrown thrown throughout this. And I think yeah, that's 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 the key to me is all the like weird drama going on. Because like think about you know we talked about Gus and playing Arkansas. That was you know a lot. You know, he 
once he he just said we're gonna torch Arkansas, Gus Malzahn decided to torch Arkansas, and not saying that we we were gonna do that, but you know you pull out an extra couple plays, couple trick things here or different looks there, and you know that that motivates your players. Well, yeah, and an interesting thing, I've I've literally never had a thought either way against Ole Miss fans, but after the Lane Kiffin thing, I I, I had you could you just saw interactions on social media and like they literally think they are Alabama. I mean, the way they talk and it's just that's been, true. It's been kind of funny. Um, they think they're you know traditionally better than Auburn. They've never even been to the SEC championship game. <laughs> Uh, uh, and they uh. are currently better than Auburn, and they've had a better past five years than Auburn, but traditionally they're not, and, and it's just been kind of funny to um, – I mean, I, I don't know about you, and we'll talk about the game, but, I mean, here, my tears, and I hope I don't offend anybody on this, you, Alabama's one, Georgia's below them, then the tier below that is basically Tennessee, Auburn, Florida, LSU. They can sneak up and win any year, but they're not always consistent. Then right. below that, you basically have your Ole Miss, South Carolina. Um, I don't know. You know, at that point, it doesn't matter. But I, I guess the whole thing is they're not traditionally at the same level as Auburn, and and they think they are above Auburn. And so that it's right. just been interesting. It, it's essentially created a little bit of a rivalry to where I, I want to beat them because if if Auburn in a very down year <laughs> wins this game Saturday when they're ranked thirteenth. I think that just solidifies that. I mean, know, that, if Auburn somehow beats number 13 Ole Miss, I think we rush the field. I think it's that kind of kind of win. I, I think we would do that. And th- that's the kind of, again, potential we, we talked about in our last podcast. If you beat Ole Miss, it takes your momentum for this season and says, we got a chance against anybody in Jordan Hare. And guess what? We could potentially win out at home. And that's on the table. And this is the first game that starts it. And I think Ole Miss, again, if you play your cards right, you have a shot. And I think that by itself, even after coming off of an LSU loss, where I think both you and I, most Auburn fans are kind of, you know, pretty down about, that still gives you a little bit of hope. Now, it could all go away. And next week we're talking about, Oh man, Ole Miss just put up 50 on us and we didn't do anything on offense. And this, that could happen, right? But we're in this because Jordan Hare can be that difference. And that that's my <laughs> my hope right now. And I hope it continues. If we beat Ole Miss, we're not losing at home. I'll go ahead and just say that. If we get past them, it's lock it in. We're right. not losing at home. Yeah. Um, let's talk through a couple of the key players for LSU or Ole Miss coming into this game. Um, their quarterback, Jackson Dart, um, has a pretty productive – he's already had 1,600 yards passing, uh, 12 touchdowns, only two interceptions. Kind of similar stats to what we saw with Jaden Daniels. Um, not as good, but pretty good. And, you know, we were able to cause an interception. We weren't able to slow him down completely. Um, Jaden Daniels is who I'm talking about. Uh, so, you know, can we – somehow produce some sort of pass rush because i think that's the key here um our secondary is already pretty thin and i think if Ole Miss continues to pass the ball like they have the rest of the season i mean this could be a high scoring game and i don't think that favors auburn because right now our offense can't necessarily keep up with that but if you can somehow keep it in the 20s kind of range you know 24 to 27 kind of range you got a legit shot here. So, um, another couple of players, uh, man, they're running back. Quinchon uh, Judkins, um, he, I mean, he gets a lot of hype, and rightfully so. Um, I still don't think he's one of the best, but he's good. Um, they've got a good number of wide receivers, as you'd imagine, with a lot of passing game. So, they're probably going to spread it out a little bit. I mean, they're going to have offensive threats. It's just a matter of can we contain them they're going to score points how many points that's the question in my mind so jared any kind of key matchups or anything that you think might be a way an edge for us even though we are at this point an underdog by six points to Ole Miss. 
Yeah, I think it's the defensive line. I think if we keep them to around 100 yards rushing, we probably win the ball game. Um, if they're mm-hmm. able to have their way running the ball, it's going to be tough. Yeah. So I think that's key. Can we stop the run? Uh, if we stop, I mean, I've watched them play. I mean, it, the, the, literally, here's here's where um, Hugh is not really going to have an excuse in this game because even Harson was getting better recruits than Ole Miss. So the last three teams we have played have probably been top six in recruiting the last three years. So they yeah. absolutely have better players almost at every position. Right. Ole Miss does not accept at quarterback, and their receivers are performing better, but from a star level, I don't know that they are. So this is – I don't want people to be confused about, well, and I know Ole Miss put up a ton against LSU, right, but this is not the same team as LSU. Now, they may come in and put up a ton of points on us uh, because Lane Kiffin is a really good coach, but they are not going to come in and overpower us, or they should not, because they don't have overpowering talent over Auburn. It's going to be very equal at most yep. positions. Yep. And so we should be able to have a better chance at stopping the run. If we can do that, I really, really like our chance. Yep, 100%. Uh, I was looking at the score predictions for this, and we're, we're going to kind of hold off on our score predictions just for a minute. But – it preseason was pretty much even. It was Ole Miss by one one point. Now it's only six points. And considering you know Auburn struggles and Ole Miss now being a thirteenth ranked team, I think says a good bit. You know Auburn still has a good chance. Um, so let's get into our players to watch, and then we'll kind of circle back to our score predictions and round things out there. So players to watch. Jared, who are you going to be watching on offense for Auburn? Hmm. Man, it's just an easy answer, but it's every week. I, I, not not a particular quarterback who's going to play quarterback. I, I got a gut feeling there might be some changes. So I guess my biggie is who's playing quarterback yeah. and and what do they do You know, with that. Let's say it is Robbie. I got no inside info, but let's say it is Robbie that comes out starting. Do we give him the full playbook? Or do we limit him like we've kind of been doing? So that that's my biggie. Who who's going to be starting? And then once we got that, what are they going to let them do? Yep, absolutely. I mean, I think it starts with the quarterback. I mean, I think there are pieces obviously around the quarterback, like wide receiver, that are not living up to the expectations. But it does come back to quarterback because we've had guys open, and the quarterbacks haven't hit them. So. The, the players that I'm going to be watching, because they were so inconsistent, it seemed like, besides a couple of players. Wide receivers. You got you to gotta have some wide receivers. I think our running backs are going to be solid. But wide receivers. I mean, it, the apparently the talk over the bye week for two full weeks was the wide receivers were taking ownership. They felt really bad about where they're at. I didn't see hardly any improvement besides maybe Camden Brown and our tight ends. That's about it. So where where are the other guys? Where, where are they going to step up? So wide receivers just in general. Defense, who are you going to be watching, Jared? I mean, probably your interior line. I mean, I know I'm not going with a particular player, but I think that interior D line is going to be yeah. very key to how this game goes. Can they get back to the same line that you know only gave up 107 yards to Georgia? Or are they going to be the one that gave up, you know, over 200 LSU? So, um, you know, and, and Dart is um, – I know a lot of the rushing yards for LSU were Jaden Daniels. Dart can run, but he's not that kind of threat. So, maybe those are misleading a little bit. But I felt like we, we definitely gave up bigger runs against LSU. So, can we stop that? If we stop that, I, again, I keep repeating it, but I, I do like our chance. Yeah, for sure. On defense, I mean, my thought is watching the secondary – because we know Ole Miss is going to pass. Our secondary is somewhat thin just due to injuries. Can we do something in the secondary? I mean, if we could yeah, get at least one interception, maybe two, secondary could be the game changer here. And that's the kind of difference makers that I think the defense needs. And I think, you know, kind of in general, that that's what Auburn needs to kind of stay in this thing. Special teams, who are you going to be watching for Auburn? Uh, I guess we're probably going to go 
field goals. Let's go with McPherson. I mean, I don't know that this is going to come down to a field goal game, but I think that we're going to need every point we can get. So if we get, mm-hmm. you know, if we get anywhere in that range, we need him to be perfect just to give us a shot. So uh, we'll go. We'll go with him. Yeah. I mean, anytime you you have a shot, if we're not scoring a touchdown, you need to get the points. And uh, so far, McPherson, I think he's been perfect this whole year. So big props to him. He's been put in some situations where I think it's not ideal for a kicker. And uh, he's he's uh, prevailed, which is awesome to see. And his only is, I think, second season here at Auburn. Special teams, I'm going to be watching. And, and this is because I, I still want to see it. Brian Batie taking one to the house. Um, that could, again, make be a big swing in the whole momentum of the game you get one of those yeah that that's awesome that that gets you an extra seven points could be a difference in the game so uh brian batiste is my guy on special teams uh let's get into our score predictions uh right now and it is a six point uh favorite towards uh old mess um i'm looking at what espn also has as their matchup predictor and uh right now Auburn has a 22% chance of beating Ole Miss. I would give us a little bit more than that just because it's in Jordan here, but 22% is still there. You know, one in five times you kind of play this matchup, Auburn ends up winning. I would hope it's a little bit more than that. And, you know, <laughs> we all know so far this season, this has been a good good kind of matchup for us um, when we're in Jordan here. So, Jared, what are you thinking for your score predictions for this game? I think preseason you had uh, said we win by 14. I said we'd win by seven. What's your thoughts now that it's game week? I mean, my – I don't know. Like, I feel like I'm being swayed because I feel like everybody's like, there's no chance. This is crazy. I'm like, are you forgetting the Georgia game? And Georgia's a better team. So, if I'm, if I'm not being swayed by public opinion – I think we win the ball game. I, I think it's. I think we win. I'll say twenty-seven, twenty-one. Um, I know that's going to be hard to keep them to twenty-one, but it's hard to win in Jordan Hare at night. Um, I mean, let's not forget Brian Harson beat probably, possibly a better offensive Ole Miss team because they had that veteran quarterback. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he Brian Harson beat them at Auburn. You know, yeah, in, in a year that we finished six and six, so. Uh, in his first season. Now, I know we had Bo Nix, right? That was the wild card. But I still, yeah, I, I think we win the ball game. Yeah. And and to me, that this game has to be in the 20s. If it gets up into the 30s, I, I think Ole Miss starts taking it away. Um, yes, I, we'll be in trouble I, if it gets – if it, I think we could manage the low 30s potentially depending on right. how we run the ball. But I agree with you. If it's, if it's anything over low 30s, we're in trouble. Yep. And, and it's just because right now I think that's not where our team strength is at. I mean, if anything, it's on defense, and even our defense got pushed around a little bit. By a little bit, I mean a lot of bit uh, by Ole Miss or by LSU. So you just don't know. I mean, I, I I think our defense is good. How does it match up against Ole Miss this week? And that's where like I'm trying to toy with my score prediction. I think seven points is still pretty reasonable that we win by and I, I still think we can win so I'll, I'll keep it at, at you know seven again if we get anything above like 33 34 points you know the game is probably going swinging hard to Ole Miss's way so yeah it could be a kind of a high 20s low 30s kind of score you're not going to keep Ole Miss off the scoreboard completely it's just not happening with this team or even keeping them super low Let's go to our final segment here, an Auburn fan perspective of the SEC. Oh, man. I, I was hoping for some big upsets. Almost had some. Um, Pama almost lost to Arkansas, 24-21. to 21. I was watching it with uh, some relatives who are Alabama fans that were in town, and there were multiple times they were, they were on the edge of their seat worried about this. And I was thinking, this is an Arkansas team that is now two and four, and Bama barely fended them off inside of Tuscaloosa. And I'm just like, what is what is going on? Like in a normal year, I would think Bama would beat Arkansas forty-five to seventeen or something, like in a game like this. 
But for some reason, Arkansas, they put up a big fight against Alabama. Uh, Georgia, they beat Vandy. But here, here's a couple of interesting storylines here. UGA's defense did allow 20 points to Vandy, which, again, I think it points to maybe UGA's, their defense isn't as good as uh, what it's been in the past. The other aspect of this was Brock Bowers went out with a look like maybe an ankle injury. Didn't look too serious. He was still walking, walking, but he was definitely hobbling around. And, I mean, that by itself, if Brock Bowers isn't 100% healthy, I mean, he is the difference maker on that Georgia offense. If you don't have him, I mean, some of those close games, I, I don't know if Georgia is able to pull them out if Brock Bowers isn't going at it like he has been um, so far this season and even previous seasons. What's your thoughts on you know, potentially them not having Brock Bowers and, and that, that kind of impact? Yeah, it's a huge impact. I mean, he, he basically influenced every pass play against us. I mean, we, if we weren't, you know, if the ball wasn't going to him, we were double teaming him, leaving other guys open. Um, I mean, I got a I got a Georgia <laughs> buddy that I got a Georgia buddy that he's concerned if he can't go. Uh, I think Georgia, you know, I think there's only a couple of teams. Well, Missouri went in a beacon. Missouri might give them trouble. Um, they got to play Ole Miss. They got to go to Tennessee. Uh, you know, so I, I they got the the outdoor cocktail party, but I don't think Florida can do it. <laughs> so. You know, I don't know with their schedule if it's going to matter a ton, but it's not going to be as dominating of wins if he can't go. Yep, I think so too. Uh, Missouri, they they actually had a pretty big, in my mind, an upset. Um, they ended up beating number 24, Kentucky, 38-21. to 21. So one of the most interesting pieces about this was not only the upset, but I don't know if you saw this, Missouri decided, and I, I think this is right. They went for it on fourth down while they were down and their punter passed the ball to one of the gunners. And it was a beautiful pass. And you're thinking, that is a gutsy call. But guess what? That got that team going and helped Missouri come back and ultimately beat Kentucky, which I personally love that. Uh, I love a good upset. And Missouri right now only has one loss and still is unranked. uh, But you know, you can see kind of the momentum swinging a little bit towards Missouri's way. Number 19, Tennessee. They beat Texas A&M. <laughs> Man, Texas A&M. Like, I've been talking about it this year. They, by themselves, underachieve so much. They're literally 4-3 and three right now. 4-3. and three. How is that possible? Like, this is Texas A&M. I still, it's, I'm at a loss of words. Like, it does not make sense to me. Like one of the announce or one of the reporters asked uh, their their coach Jimbo Fisher, "Hey, what do you what do you say to the fans after this game?" He was like, "I don't care." And you're like, "That's not a good answer." Uh, <laughs> he didn't say it exactly like that. He was like, "I don't care about fans. I care about my players." And you're like, "That's a terrible answer." You, you have a little empathy, dude. Like have an empathy towards the play. Uh, the people towards, paying your salary. Players. Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. And you're like, oh, bad answer. Bad answer. <laughs> yeah, the people that are coming to the games that are allowing them to pay you, you know, eleven million a year. Yep. And and probably will be paying your buyout. Uh if it's not next year, it'll be the year after. <laughs> Man, I hope it's I hope it's a few more years. I like I like oh, even, I though, so even though they beat us, I like having Jimbo at A and M because A and M is a is a sleeping giant. So if they get somebody in there that knows what they're doing, it could be dangerous. I know that that's that's a part of me where I'm like, I just personally don't like Jimbo, so I want him to be fired. But inside, I'm like, I really just want him to stay. Yeah, so like like Lane Kiffin Auburn, at A and M would be dangerous. Yeah, yeah if. if if somehow Lane Kiffin went there, my goodness, they would be running the table every year, I feel like. Yeah. Um, one more game, and this was uh, a couple of my best friends' team, uh, South Carolina. They lost to Florida, and my friends were just like, they, they're they they they're tough. They're, they're, or they're at a loss right now. They're kind of like Auburn. Lots of losses. Uh, I think they've only won two games this, this whole season at South Carolina. And uh, just been a rough season for them. Uh, Florida, when when they want to be good, sometimes they can be really good. And sometimes when they want to just suck, they definitely suck. So it depends on what kind of team you get with Florida this year. So, Jared, any other final thoughts about this Ole Miss game coming up? 
um, or anything kind of generally in college football going on? No, not really. Uh, I think we've pretty much covered it all. So let's just hopefully we can go out there and take care of business uh, Saturday night in Jordan Hare. Crazier things have happened. Yeah, definitely crazier things. I mean, what was it? Just three weeks ago, we competed against Georgia. I feel like most people didn't even give us uh, even a glimpse of hope. And here we are, almost beating Georgia. And uh, you know, it's an Ole Miss team that I think the talent uh, disparity is way less than Georgia or against LSU. I think we, we have a better shot from that perspective, too. Um, it's just a matter of can we figure out a few things uh, in the passing game, quarterback situation, what are you doing there? And, you know, hold, hold hopefully Ole Miss to under 30. And I think those are your keys to winning this football game. So, Jerry, before we get out of here, how can the people stay in touch with you? You can find me on Facebook under my name, Aaron Davis. And uh, you can find me on Twitter, A-J-A-Y-J-A-Y underscore. It's always great to be an Auburn Tiger and War Eagle. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode on the E2C Network. On your way out, I want to remind you to stop by E2Cnetwork.com. It's your one-stop shop for all our content across our podcast, YouTube channel, and much more. To stay up to date with us, make sure you're following social media accounts such as Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. While our content here may always be Auburn sports heavy, if it's orange and blue, it's what we do. War Eagle.